Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to worship this evening. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Opening hymn for this evening is found on the top of the second page in our worship bulletin. <laughs> and love sent his one and only Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who by his perfect life and innocent sufferings and death paid for all of our sins in full on Calvary's cross. Upon this your confession I declare to you the forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the song response. society and join together our first parents as husband and wife. Help us to honor those you have placed over us, to be dedicated to serving you 
and to serving our loving Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, whom you have sent to be the Savior of the world. We ask this in his holy name, he who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Since it's uh, Mother's Day this coming Sunday, uh, the service this week is uh, focused a bit on the important responsibilities that God has placed into mother's hands and the honor that is due them uh, for that and also the importance of Christian uh, mothers and fathers who impart this faith into the hearts of their children and grandchildren through the Word of God also. Our Old Testament lesson is taken from Pro Proverbs chapter 31 beginning at the 10th verse and it shows us uh, especially when you we, when we get to the end especially when we get to the end of the lesson how God highly values and how he encourages us to highly praise and regard and reward our Christian mothers well, we read a wife of noble character who can find she is worth far more than rubies her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant's ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still dark. She provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets them out of work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable, and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes, takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sash, sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Here ends our Old Testament class, and we continue with the song response. truth and love. 
It has given me great joy to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as the Father commanded us. And now, dear lady, I am not writing you a new command, but one we have had from the beginning. I ask that we love one another. And this is love, that we walk in obedience to his commands. As you have heard from the beginning, his command is that you walk in love. Many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh have gone out into the world. Any such person is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch out that you do not lose what you have worked for, but that you may be fully rewarded. Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not take him into your house or welcome him. Anyone who welcomes him sh shares in his wicked work. I have much to write to you, but I do not want to use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to visit you and talk with you face to face, so that our joy may be complete. The children of your chosen sister send their greetings. And that's the entire letter. We continue now with our summer response. chapter of Luke's Gospel, beginning at the 12th verse. As Jesus approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, Don't cry. Then he went up and touched the coffin, and those carrying it stood still. He said, Young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. They were all filled with awe and praised God. A great prophet has appeared among us, they said. God has come to help his people. This news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. Here ends our gospel lesson. We now join together in our sermon hymn for this evening. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The text for our meditation, again, as we are observing uh, our National Mother's Day this coming Sunday, is taken from the second letter to Timothy, the first chapter beginning at verse 5. Paul writes to this young pastor, I have been reminded of your sincere, your genuine faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. These are the words of our Lord. In the name of our Savior, dear Christian friends. Last Sunday and Monday, I was trying to start getting ready for church well, for this week. And um, I decided I was going to Google just to see what else other ideas I might bump into. I Googled Mother's Day sermon texts. I just wanted to see if uh, I'd bump into anything that might be fresh or something along those lines. And when I did, I, I came across lists of sermon texts, and uh, I looked all those over and studied them, and I, I, I got the lists, and uh, there wasn't anything new I saw there. But then, on Sunday and Monday, I decided, uh, okay, because a lot of links were for actual sermons. So I started reading them. And by Monday, I'd probably read 20, 25 Mother's Day sermons. And an interesting fact about it was the more I read, the more I became appalled and shocked because every single one of those sermons that I read, the church has either Christian or Christ in the name of the church and in the name of the organization. And I was just shocked at how abominable and abysmal these sermons were. Some of them never had the word Christ in the whole sermon. And then a lot of them had, I think, and, and then others wrote about women. And I suppose it's fitting on Mother's Day you would write about women, but, you know, women we should em emulate, and uh, go-getters and uh, people that broke the mold and all this kind of stuff, and you should be like them too, I guess. And there was not one sermon in that whole bunch that talked about faith, and Christ, and how we're saved, and I was just shocked. So, remember last week, Jesus said in the gospel lesson, he said, all who ever came before me were thieves and robbers. And he said it about those religious people that were trying to lead people away from Jesus, their Savior, to something else that is no gospel at all, the apostle had to tell the Galatians. And after reading those sermons, man, I went to the Sunday school class on Tuesday saying, thinking, I'm just going to teach them the simple truths. And the same for church today, too. Uh, this text is so fitting and appropriate, especially for Mother's Day, because, you see, on this national observance of Mother's Day, there, there's, there's many wonderful things that we can, uh, for Mother's Day, uh, show respect and honor and thanks to our mothers for all the wonderful things that they have done for us. And in whatever way we deem appropriate, we can do that. And you know, there's been tons of commercials on TV and all this kind of stuff, you know, and they want us to really spend our money, you know, spend our money for Mother's Day. But Paul here reminds us, we should remember, we should remember those things that God tells us are important and spiritual. And those are the things that we should really remember about Mother's Day. Because that's really the most important thing. The important spiritual aspects of Mother's Day. And of course they apply to both parents. And not just moms. But for you and I, notice today, Paul was able to write to this young pastor named Timothy. Doesn't sound like he was married. 
And, uh, but he had a mom, and he had a grandma. And notice how Paul was able to remind Timothy. He says, I have been reminded, I have been brought to my memory about your genuine faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. So this wonderful, important aspect of Mother's Day is that moms have an absolutely vital role, and that is imparting genuine faith to their children and grandchildren. Now, when you read uh, this letter, uh, the second letter of Timothy, it's kind of a touching, and I'm so... I don't know if you would say sentimental, but, but a bit emotional uh, in the letter. Well, why? This is probably Paul's last letter ever. So if you knew that this was somebody's last Mother's Day, I think it would be a little sentimental, if not emotional, if we knew it was somebody's last Mother's Day this coming Sunday. And things would probably be a little more emotional. There's no other way around it. So as Paul writes this letter, he, he speaks of this. He says, I have been reminded of your genuine faith. Well, I got slapped in the face with what was not genuine faith when I read a lot of those sermons this, at the beginning of the week. I dumped into a lot of these words. I think. Another thing. You know, our Mother's Day sermon. I think the Hindus are closer in their concept to God. Blah, 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 blah. And then, all of these people, a few of them said right in their Mother's Day sermon, I believe in the man Jesus. But I don't believe in the God, Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins. Okay. And then we heard in our epistle lesson uh, from the apostle saying, Anybody who denies that Jesus has come into the flesh as the Son of God is of the spirit of the Antichrist. And didn't Jesus remind us many false prophets have gone out into the world? So that is a fake faith. Anything that does not put its trust in Jesus, the Son of God, where does it lead? Eternal death and hell. And what's a genuine faith? Well, just look at other scripture passages. The righteous, the just, shall live by faith. And what are we believing in? This righteousness comes from God through Jesus Christ, to all who believe, and it brings peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Or Paul wrote to the Galatians, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me by the res uh, and through his resurrection from the dead. So what you and I have been taught in the scriptures about this Jesus born of Mary the Virgin, and who suffered and died under Pontius Pilate and rose again on the third day, such simple truths. And who brought us to this? God's Word and the power of His Holy Spirit did all this for us. And He uses intermediaries. He used the apostles. He used pastors and teachers. And He uses moms and dads and grandpas and grandpas all the time. And they bring them this Word and they continue to uh, impart it. So as we gather together on this... Um, day of worship, notice what God does for Timothy's grandmother and mother. He honors them by name and says they imparted this genuine living faith from themselves and from their lives to the life of their grandson and son. And we just celebrated and observed Good Shepherd Sunday last uh, week, right? And in one of the hymns, 
that scriptural truth is always taught. He even calls me by my name. And here, God called Lois and Eunice by their names and recorded in all the scripture for all time as a reminder to us that God honors and rewards everyone who continues to carry out his work. And it doesn't matter what station in life we're at. You know, being a mom can definitely be uh, not just hard work, but a lot of, at times, doldrums of kinds of work that if a mom would have to count how many poopy diapers she has possibly changed over the course of her being a mom, and then count how many diapers as a maybe grandma. Now, that seems kind of like a dirty job to have. But, you know, it's all part of that wonderful responsibility that God had imparted to moms and dads and grandpas and grandmas. But more importantly, they've got the greater truth that they're able to impart to their kids and grandkids and maybe even great-grandkids. And notice in Proverbs 31, uh, God reflects that, how we should honor. We should honor and praise those who have served in such an awesome way, their Lord. By serving their families, moms and dads are serving their Lord. By teaching them, the truths, their families, the truths of God's holy word in this genuine faith about Jesus Christ who rose again for our justification. They're doing the Lord's work. And what a wonderful blessing that most of us can all say. Not all of us. Uh, you know, members have told me over the years, you know, oh, my parents never went to church. They didn't teach me any of this. I learned it all later from so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so. So not everybody has been blessed with Christian parents. But when we have them, notice how Proverbs 31 there reminds us, give them the praise and the honor they deserve and continue with them also. Notice the last thing. Hopefully, hopefully, see, it isn't an absolute. Hopefully, when we impart these genuine teachings and our genuine faith to our children and grandchildren, it will be seen in the lives of them. But I want you to note, when we read that second letter of John, did you catch the phrase? It gives me great joy to see that some of your children are walking in the truth. He didn't say all, did he? He said some. And there are many parents and grandparents who struggle because they see their children or grandchildren not following in the truths that they were taught. And many times it brings a lot of grief. And I uh, heard an online devotion this week, and the pastor, on, the Wells pastor on that online devotion reminded us of the importance of our prayers. Okay, so somebody's not going to church. Somebody doesn't seem to be living that genuine faith in their lives. Pray, pray, pray. Even when people think they don't have any purpose left in life or they're too old or too decrepit, they can pray. And notice, the apostle says, oh, what a joy to see that some of your children are walking in the truth. So, on this National Observance of Mother's Day, there's a lot of things to remember, as the Apostle Paul reminds us. But most than foremost, the wonderful blessings that we have if we've had Christian moms and dads and grandpas and grandpas that imparted that truth to us. Don't forget to thank God for them. Don't forget to thank them for what they did. Uh, don't forget to keep everybody in your prayers that needs to be in our prayers because maybe they're not walking in that truth. Another reminder, too, is that, wow, 
When I read those 15, 20, 25 sermons, they all talked about stuff we got to do and people we got to serve and things we must do in order to make this world a better place and not have injustice. If that's their only good news and if that's their only gospel, they must have a sorry idea of the afterlife. Whereas for us, that genuine faith reminds us that this Jesus saves us. He died for all our sins. We have no guilt. We have no shame. And John even wrote about that. He says, even if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. And sometimes we are, are that way. Will there ever be a perfect mom? Will there ever be a perfect dad or grandpa and grandma? Absolutely not. There will never be a perfect child. There was never a perfect an apostle except Jesus. And that apostle died on the cross for all of our failings and our sins and our mistakes and our guilt and shame. So we, we, having been lifted of the entire burden, can continue to live this genuine faith in the truth of God's word and know that we are saved. We're going to heaven whenever we die and whenever our work is done. And until that time, it's all to God's glory that people live this in their lives, that they impart this in their lives. And so may we also then strive out of thanks for all the blessings God has given us to let that genuine faith exhibit itself in our lives too. Happy Mother's Day. Father's Day is not too far down the road in June. And uh, what an awesome thing. More importantly, that we're all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep and guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's now join our hearts together in prayer. Lord God, you alone call sinners out of the darkness of unbelief to faith. We thank you for all those who have come before us as faithful Christians and who, who, according to your command, brought their children to you and brought them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Help us to honor those, especially Christian parents, as our nation celebrates Mother's Day, not with just words, but with honor and praise for all the work that they do and did on your behalf as they served you in serving us. Grant that we in our own lives exhibit that living and genuine faith in Jesus as our Savior from sin, a living faith that helps to lead others to Jesus, their Savior. Finally, in all of our earthly responsibilities, and especially on this Mother's Day, continue to equip and support mothers in all of their important duties and responsibilities. We ask this in Jesus' name, who has also then taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We continue with our closing hymn.
George, welcome everyone this evening. Glad to have you with us. Have an excellent week, and uh, God bless. Thanks.